in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do a glass etching. For this project you'll need a glass or mirrored item, contact paper, an exacto knife, a sharpie, you'll need a scrap piece of cardboard or something that you can cut on, etching cream which I use the Armor Etch etching cream which I think works best. You'll need a popsicle stick, a sponge, a pair of scissors, and of course your design. So let's begin. To begin the glass etching, um, there's a couple things I want to go over with you regarding your design. So um, you can see here, this is the design that I have chosen to do for this tutorial, um, the rhinoceros. Um, and I'm going to show you what would happen um, if you don't transfer your design or cut it out um, the correct way. So if when you're tracing this design, you want to trace every line that is on here onto the contact paper. In this contact paper, by the way, you can get, um, I actually purchased this at Lowe's. It's basically um, shelf paper, like sticky shelf paper. And you'll see the back looks like this. It comes on a roll um, and you'll end up peeling the backing away. So it's basically like a giant um, sticker sheet. So um, when you get ready to trace your design on here, um, Again, you want to make sure you trace every line. Same goes for when you cut it out. You want to cut everything out. The other thing that's really important is that you save all of your inside pieces. And I'm going to show you why. So if I let me get these other ones out of the way here. If I did not save the eye and um, the contours of the wrinkles and the nose part, all of that, then when I um, etch the design, so when I apply the etching cream and it etches, you're going to end up with a design that looks like this. So you have to save those little pieces when you cut them out and place them onto the glass to protect that area of the glass from the etching cream getting through. Otherwise it's going to etch every bit of that, um, you know, the, the black part that's shown is supposed to um, represent the etched areas. So you can see this part of the nose would be filled in and so would the eyes and the wrinkles. So, um, same goes for letters. So this is the design I'm going to do, but I have this other example here to show you as well. So, if you were doing a letter, um, especially a block letter, that has inside cutout sections like this, same thing. You have to save these pieces. So what you're going to be putting actually on your glass is all of the area that is white. If you, um, and again, the black represents the etched areas. If you do not save these inside stickers um, and put them on the glass, your whole piece is going to be etched like this. And you don't want that. So it's really important with your letters, designs, whatever you choose to etch onto your glass or your mirrored surface um, that you save those pieces. So the first step once you choose your design is to trace it onto the contact paper. So you'll just lay your design on. If you put this up, um, even right now, obviously you can't really see the design through that. Um, this is, has two sheets, the contact paper and then the backing. So when you put it on there, it's hard to see. Um, I have a light tracer with a light box that I'm gonna use, but you could just put this up to a window if you don't have access to one of those. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna use my Sharpie and outline everything, so transfer everything to this um, contact paper. When I come back, I'm going to show you how to cut out your design and the importance of safety when you're cutting. Now that I have traced my design um, onto my contact paper, I am ready to begin cutting it out. So. Um, what I would do before you do this is take your glass piece and make sure that this is going to fit on here, um, which I've already sized that at the beginning. If your um, contact paper is a little too big and it hangs off, um, I would just trim it. But you want to have excess around your design because wherever 
the contact paper sticks to your glass item, that is going to act as a barrier um, for that etching cream. So you do want to have this. You don't want to cut and then you know end up trimming it with only a quarter of an inch around your design or you risk the etching cream dripping or getting onto the outside part of the glass. So when cutting, we're going to use an X-Acto knife. Um, you're going to want to cut your design in as clean lines as possible. So what I'm actually doing is cutting out the area. I'm going to remove that and again I'm going to save all of these inside pieces to stick onto my glass because those again will protect your design from looking like this. Okay. So when you're cutting it's really important that you think of a couple things. One, never ever put, position your hand like this and cut towards your hand. You are putting yourself at highly at risk of slipping off of the board. So remember we have a piece of just scrap cardboard underneath um, to protect our surface that we're cutting on. Um, but when you're cutting, you know, you don't have absolute control over this X-Acto knife. So you really need to be careful that you're not cutting towards your hand. So you're better off to hold your paper in place like this and cut away from yourself, away from your hand like this. The other thing you want to do is you don't want it so close to your body and you're cutting like this that if it slips, you know, you end up stabbing yourself. Again, not fun. So always think before you cut. Sometimes I even find myself realizing that I'm cutting a little bit too close to my hand, so I have to stop and reposition my hand. So when you're cutting, you're going to just follow your black line. You want to press in firmly so that it's cutting through the surface and you're going to turn. Okay, so I'm not going to I'm not going to move my hand again and cut towards my hand. I'm going to turn the paper to follow that cut. So if I'm working with a curve, I'm just slowly turning. And what this does by instead of constantly picking up the knife and putting it back, put it, picking it up, putting it down, is I reduce the amount of jagged edges that I will get. This will give a nice clean cut around this. So you can see I've cut all the way through here. Um, and then again, I'm going to continue doing that for the rest of the stuff. When you get to these really thin areas, just be careful. Um, you know, you just want to do your best to try to avoid um, ripping that at all because those little thin parts can be a little tricky. The next thing I'm going to show you is when you cut these inside parts. So I'm going to cut out this little sliver here and this side. This is the piece that I'm going to save. So I'm going to save that little bit, which is going to, again, end up going on my glass. So I'm going to end up with about seven or eight little pieces in addition to the outside part, the outside sticker, more or less, um, that's going to go on the glass. So I'm going to finish cutting out my design. When I come back, I'm going to show you how to apply the stencil to your glass. Now that the design is cut out of the contact paper, so you can see here what I've cut out, and I saved my small pieces here for the eyes, the wrinkles, and the nose. Um, I'm going to apply the outer part to my glass because remember, the um, area that is covered with the contact paper is the area that is going to stay clear. So all of this exposed area is what um, is going to be the etched part of the glass. So to do this, I'm going to peel the backing off of my design here. 
You want to be really careful when you have the really thin little strands. So like all the wrinkles on the rhino, you want to be careful when you're peeling this apart so that it doesn't tear those. And what I'm going to do is get this positioned where I want. And I'm going to lay it on here. The nice thing about this contact paper is I can pick it up and lay it back down several times. So I'm going to get this positioned. Um, press everything down with your nail. Kind of go back and make sure it's pressed really well onto the glass. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and put all of these little pieces where they go. So I'm going to refer back to my um, original design or you can look at the stencils. So for instance, this little piece I know is going to go about right here for run, one of the um, wrinkles. So I'm going to get the um, design on there and then I'm going to show you how to apply the etching cream. As you can see, I have um, applied the stencil onto the glass. Um, I went back and put the inside pieces that created the um, nostril of the nose, the eye, the wrinkles, um, applied those as well. And um, something I want to point out is um, the, the part of the contact paper where it doesn't lay down flat that's okay as long as right around the perimeter, so the edge of your design, as long as that is laying down flat and you've gone back and used, um, I think it's best to go back and use your nail and really press it down to make sure that it's really flat so no etching cream gets underneath there. Um, but as long as that's flat, then the rest of this, it doesn't matter. It's still gonna protect the glass. You're not gonna get anything through there. Um, so just really focus on around the edge of the stencil. So what the next step is, is I'm going to take the lid off of this, is applying the etching cream. Um, and for the tutorial I'm going to show you here, normally I have my students do this right by the sink. Um, one thing is, you know, this is etching cream. It eats into glass. So you can imagine what it could do if you were to let it sit on your skin for an extended amount of time or if you were to you know put it in your eyes or anything like that um, you know we're not really doing anything where it's going to get in our eyes and um, if the kids get it on their hands they always just wash it right off and it's fine um, I just tell them to you know do what they can but you could certainly wear um, protective gloves if you wanted to so we just use a popsicle stick and dip it in there and it does have um, a gross smell, kind of smells like rotten eggs, so fair warning, but you're going to rub on the etching cream in all the areas of the exposed glass, and you want to apply this in a layer that is thick enough to coat the glass, but not so thick that if I were to set the glass up on its side, which I'm going to do that when I'm done um, while it sits. I don't want the etching cream to run. If for instance I were to have had this stencil a little bit short and it dripped down, it would get on that exposed glass and etch those areas that I didn't want to be etched. If you do happen to get the etching cream on an area that you don't want it to be, um, so if there is some exposed glass you don't want it to um, be on, you don't want it to etch, then just quickly wash it off. This stuff works works really fast, so if you let it sit for any amount of minutes, it's gonna start etching into it. So you apply this in an even layer. The bigger the um, open area that you're applying it to, the more likely it is that you may have to go back and do a second coat. Um, what happens sometimes is even though you do a really good job of coating it, you could potentially have streaks in the etching when you're done. So all you have to do is um, once you get done with this step, if you see areas like that, you can go back and apply a second coat of etching cream or just touch up those areas and just apply a little bit of etching cream on those spots. So um, let me finish this out. 
Another question students ask a lot of times is if they can have areas that are etched um, really solid and then some that are not as much. Unfortunately, no, it's basically etched or not etched. You can't have, you know, areas that are lightly etched and kind of in between. I had a student one year that wanted to um, kind of shade with the etching cream and it just doesn't, just doesn't work like that. That comes in when we do um, glass engraving in jewelry and glass two, which is kind of like the second level of this. It's just kind of a different variation of um, designing on the glass. So you can see I have um, my layer of etching cream on here. I'm just gonna toss the popsicle stick. I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna let this sit for 20 minutes um, and then when I am finished with it, I'm going to, so once the 20 minutes is up, I'm going to keep the stencil on. I'm going to put this under the faucet, cold water, and I'm going to rinse it off. Um, try to get as much of the etching cream off as I can. I'm going to use my sponge in the water and try to really wash it off well. Do not panic when you do that because it's going to look like the glass did not etch at first. The water, so while the etched area is still wet, it makes it a little more transparent, so it makes it appear that it hasn't etched, but it should have, so don't, don't worry about that. Um, so they'll rinse off the majority of the etching cream as much as you can. Once you get that done, peel off the stencil as fast as you can, um, and then go back and rinse it all one more time really well. And then once you do that and dry it, it should show up, your design should show up really, really well. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then when I come back, I'm going to show you the um, finished product. One more thing, though, quickly I want to point out is, um, that I forgot to mention before, is to not use colored glass. We've found in the past that the majority of colored glass does not work with the etching cream. So um, you obviously are certainly... Um, capable of trying that yourself. Um, we have in the past found we had just one set of glasses that worked well, but um, other than that, nothing we have found will work. So anyway, um, I'm going to finish this up, let it sit for 20 minutes, wash it off. When I come back, I'll show you the finished design. All right, I have the design um, finished up here. I took the contact paper off. Um, Actually, the first thing I did was took the sponge and washed off all of the um, etching cream after the 20 minutes. I made sure I washed it off really well, took the stencil off, um, and finished washing it. And like I said before, you know, at first it looked like it didn't really etch that much, um, but as I dried it, I could see it showing up more. Um, if you choose a mirror as your surface, it will actually show up even darker because it's you know, it's almost like twice as dark because it's reflecting the etching as well. Um, and then the last thing that you could do is if you had any areas, so like I can see right here a little line that's just slightly uneven, I could go back with a paintbrush and the etching cream and touch that up just a little bit, leave a little bit of etching cream um, to sit on there again for another 20 minutes and just rinse it off. So you can certainly do some touch-ups afterwards um, if you feel that that's necessary. So that is how to etch glass.